welcome to Reality Hour. I am Adam Samuel. Today, uh, it, it's crazy to think, but this is actually the penultimate coverage of an American Idol episode. I mean, the the season is coming to blink of an eye, and uh, we're already like knocking on the finale's door. But joining me for this podcast is my co-host Eric. How are you doing today, Eric? He's got he's got a new hair coat, guys. It's going well um, overall. I, um, this week was better than last week. But not by much. Um, I mean, the results this week were less were worse than last week. But performances from the people we have left were pretty decent. Again, I don't, I think I gave like one person an A. I think we're starting to get that point of uh, we're hitting that decline a little bit of the season. I mean, the these these live episodes were kind of fun to start, but at this point, I feel like it's it's starting to wear on 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 the show i mean the format's kind of a little bit for me it's just so rushed like yeah. this is more ru- like the previous season was rushed and the previous season before that was rushed and we're just rushing through it and it's just there's well, to be fair, there's the original no- plan was to not rush it as much but then covid screwed up everything yeah and that's that's kind of the biggest bummer for me is that i don't think these crop of talent, these crop of contestants are like the worst we've ever seen. Oh, far from it. I think this is a much better overall year than last year, for example. I miss the kind of big show of the performances. I miss the stage. I miss the crowds. Like I, Eric is shaking his head, but I, I don't know. They, they had a magic to it. And this kind of feels very, it's like the, excitement has just been pulled from it there was some excitement to a live show now it just doesn't match up well here's how i look at it um this is a very me way of looking at things which is that i was really mad when they got rid of the itunes studio recordings a couple years ago and because i i listen to them all the time for my favorite contestants um and if they're not going to have studio recordings officially anymore, I like the idea of not having an audience for the live shows. So I at least get something similar. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's tough. You know, I, today I had a little a little bit of time, so I actually went back and rewatched two contestants runs on the American Idol seasons. Uh, the peak, my peak interest in the show. I rewatched the runs of Holly Cavanaugh and I rewatched the runs of Gina Irene, who Eric is instantly rolling his eyes at. But no, I'm not. What are you <laughs> talking about? Well, I'm eyes at maybe the first one, but I've seen Gina in concert. She's awesome. Well, I watched both of these contestants' runs, and first of all, they're phenomenal and incredibly entertaining to rewatch. They're so good. But what I just came away from watching it was thinking. If you have Holly or you have Gina on this season, they do not get the chance that they had on the regular format. When you have, when you're cutting yeah, people so much, hard, you wouldn't get the chance you have on an ABC anymore. Just, but. And that just made me think, like, what if we had a season like this format where a contestant like Gina just got cut, like the first giant mammoth of a cut? And that just because if you look at Gina's first performance in the live show, it was paint it black and it was a wild card she needed to make it through if that if in this format she's just gone and we never got to see gina's run on the show the same with holly who kind of for me is the epitome she's very comparable in my opinion to Haley reinhardt a little bit where they kind of had some rough parts but then eventually kind of like hit this stride towards the latter part of the season where they just kind of like blossomed where they just took on this form that you don't usually see and that's That's the biggest problem I have with uh, modern day Idol. It's you don't, contestants like Holly, contestants like Gina, I didn't watch Jax's run, but I'm sure she would, actually no, Jax was kind of a front runner. But those two contestants kind of where you, you get to see an arc. It's kind of where you, they, it just, I miss those days when we were only losing one contestant a week. Like that was so much better. I miss the results show. I miss- At this point, Adam, we're never getting that back. But I'd settle for like eight weeks of live shows. I'd settle for that. That's the bare minimum. Four weeks is on is is if if this was the format without COVID being the cause, I would say it's unforgivable. <laughs> Pretty much. I feel like there's a butt coming. No butt? What butt? I don't know. I felt like there was a 
Uh, I don't know. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Damn it! Now you now you got me do it. What? I said there's no but, but, and then. Oh. <laughs> Well, there you go. Well, speaking of, I was going to make like a Finding Nemo reference because this is Disney night. Uh, Eric immediately you really rolled. Because I would have enjoyed it. <laughs> anyway, this was Disney night. But before we can actually get into the contestants, I do want to spend just a couple of minutes right here at the top of the show to kind of eulogize uh, the contestants we lost um, going to the results. Which, by the way, I really didn't like. I think it was last year and the year before when we kind of had a better system of handling results where kind of everyone sings and then the results are kind of at the end. I don't like it. Well, that was, because, the well that was because um, last year and the year before, but I did the results the same night. I don't, I thought it was from the week before. Like no, they would no, perform. No, no, remember last, you already forgot the, the, the big innovation with ABC Idol was that they did a live coast to coast broadcast, all three time zones, all four time zones watched at the same time and voted at the same time and were all for the end. Maybe I'm just remembering incorrectly. I, I don't remember that being like. It was I, like I the big result. point that but why people watched ABC Idol. I don't know. Regardless, I. Hashtag Adam is forgetful. <laughs> it's been a long day, Eric. Um, <laughs> what was I saying beforehand? I totally lost my train of thought. Um, we were eulogizing the contestants we lost. So here's who we lost. We lost Grace. We lost Michaela. We lost Joven. And we lost Sophia. Pretty expected results, Eric. As, ex as, I, as much as I knew Michaela was a goner, I'm still sad it happened. That's all Eric, I'll say. She had no chance. She had no chance. I knew she had no chance. That's your I'm own fault for getting your hopes up. No? It's my fault for getting my hopes up, yeah. All right. Michaela, I don't think she ever really had a chance. We lose Grace this episode. Um, where I I think we might go over this in a later podcast, but just yeah, briefly. We'll, we'll save them in a later. We'll save these four for a later podcast. How about that? But just to give like a, a, a bit of a teaser, like what was the biggest problem, just off the top of your head, for Grace? I don't know. <laughs> it's fair enough. Um, Joven, I think Joven was a dead man walking. Um, Sophia, Sophia's kind of the one bummer here. Sophia, but, um, really? No, Sophia wasn't a bummer for me. Sophia, Sophia was very much a Marmite contestant. Some people loved her, some people didn't like her at all. Yeah. <laughs> Grace says Grace was <laughs> I like that. That was, um, yeah. Well, like I said, we are. We started kind of a new thing that we do on Reality Hour where we are going to do – we're going to do another one, right? Uh, a why they lost. Uh, where did they yeah, go wrong? Yeah, so we'll save it for that one. All right. So we will – like I said, we will save the discussion of Michaela, Grace, Sophia, and Joven for another one. But, but it's a bummer that we lost them. I wish – I just wish we had a better format where we could have spent more time. I, I really don't like this speeding through. I don't like it on The Voice. I don't like it here. It's just American Idol was different because it didn't do that because it allowed contestants to kind of have a growth. Um, yeah, and Grace says, to be fair, the entire episode was boring. I have to uh, agree. Eric and I were talking about this kind of earlier before the, we actually went live where I was saying, usually in American Idol seasons, there comes a point when my favorites have gone home and kind of um, there's a few people left and I kind of start to – spend some more time looking at my phone while I'm watching the show. I watch the show twice. I watch it once uh, live and then once kind of in preparation for the podcast again. Um, but this season, a lot earlier, I found myself um, not – it didn't hold my attention as it usually did. Did you kind of get the same feel, Eric? Um, well, I didn't watch it live or – I just watched performances this week because – now that all my favorites are gone and I have no reason to be invested anymore, I, I'm just going to watch performances and I'll read what MJ wrote, what the judge has said, because I will do that. Um, but, yeah. It also is just kind of a bummer because I feel like the Disney theme, the episode, was kind of so promising in season 16. We had really good performances. We had Ma Maddie doing Bare Necessities. We had Katie doing Once Upon a Dream. Like, we had so many good stuff and interesting stuff. And this time it was 
just kind of a stinker um both rounds honestly i mean just looking at looking at them through i mean it was just i gotta say like i don't know how a winner of this season is going to kind of claw their way to any sort of anything resembling fame afterwards eric yeah that wasn't gonna happen though so yeah, I mean, but, but maybe if they're lucky, they might come back for the next season's Disney night and get to awkwardly perform a cover for some reason, which <laughs> I thought his cover was worse than some of the other contestants, Lane Hardy's. I didn't even watch it, if I'm honest. I, I watched just, it. I, I, I'm, yeah. All right. Anyway, I, in conclusion, before we kind of get into the actual deep dive, I just want to say... It's a real bummer that, and for me, and I will say this, I think this season will always have an asterisk beside it. And I think that really takes away something special. But anyway, actually one more thing before we get to the deep dive. So we are left with seven contestants right now. Tell me how this finale is going to go, Eric. Where what's what's going with the numbers? Like, what's what's going to happen? Have two, and then we have five competing in the finale. They'll all think twice, presumably. Actually, no, we know of all things twice. And then at the end of the episode, we go from five to one. Are they going to send them home, like, one at a time to get down to that, like, final two standing? Well, that's what I'd like, but they're not going to do that. They're just going to... I think they will. No, they, they will. They, they love having the two people standing next to each other. Well, well actually... Well, we're not standing <laughs> next to <laughs> No one's standing next to anyone right now. But other than that, yeah, no, not happening. All right. Well, well, let's actually get into the deep dive here. We are going to talk about the contestants in together. So up first, we are going to be talking about Arthur Gunn. So his Disney performance is Kiss the Girl from Little Mermaid, uh, previously sang by Cade Fainer, season 16. Um, I don't know why. I don't think this is a good song for competing sh competition shows. And this is now twice that we've heard uh, people singing it, Eric. Yeah, I mean, eh, I mean, this was okay. It wasn't amazing. I mean, I think Arthur has earned a place in the top five, but he would not be a deserving winner at this point for me. And there we go. Am I back? You're back. All right, go on. What were you saying? Did you not hear what I said? Okay. So cut out and you couldn't hear me. Okay. I can um, hear you. I'm sorry. This episode is going to be edited, is what, is what I'm going to say. So please don't share the link to this episode after after we finish it because a new version will be it. will be uploaded shortly after with edits and less stuff. Anyway, so so I thought Arthur was okay. Wasn't amazing. But I mean of the top seven, he deserves a place in the top five. But I don't think he'd be a worthy winner at this point. I, I I've fallen off the Arthur Gunn train. I'm I'm I I used to kind of I don't think he's he I don't think he'd be a worthy winner at all, Eric. Like you said. But you said you started off by saying you disagree. What did you disagree with me on? That you said you liked some of his performances. That you were kind of you were starting out kind of positive. <laughs> For me, I feel like so you disagree with with me trying to be. Wow, this is this is a flip. This is a yeah. real flip, everybody. I gotta be honest. It's it's funny because I picked him first on the draft, but he's just kind of been well. You know, it's ironic. He's playing a Lane Hardy game. Like, oh, it's absolutely. Just, and we knew we, no, he's playing a Philip Phillips game. We knew we knew we'd be doing that. No, Philip Phillips had we got tonight. He had volcano. There was something there. Arthur Gunn is just if Arthur like, had every, eight weeks. You can bet he would have done a slower song once. Well, Kiss the Girl is kind of slow. Yeah. Eric is shaking his head. I don't know. Th this song, it just doesn't lend itself to anything. It's kind of really straightforward. People haven't switched it up. It's just dull. It's and I feel like... Kind of, sort of did. Uh... No. Yeah, no. Is that an Eric uh, hashtag idle disagree? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm just not excited about Arthur, and I really want to be excited about our winner. It's not going to happen this year. But I actually would disagree. I actually don't think it's going to happen. I I feel like we're in for, like someone in the chat says, I, I think he's more Alejandro than Lane. 
honestly. As as similar to Lane as he is, I actually think Francisco has a shot here. I mean, of the seven, he's the one I would pick. So I hope he's so. on your draft. Because he's on your draft. No, that's not why. Because I actually like some of the performances. All right. Well, has anyway, let's talk about draft. Um, if it was in my draft, I would pick Louis Knight, and I because he's the safer, more traditional out of whole white guy winner. We will talk about Louis Knight, but anyway, for Arthur Gunn's second performance, which was um, Mother's Mother's Day dedication, which was sweet, but I felt a little bit, I don't know, it, it was kind of really trying to draw the emotion out of the contestants, which did feel a little bit forced for, for some of them, but he's performing Hey Ma by Bonnie Vare. Um, I've never heard of this song before hearing it on Idol, Eric. Did, did, are you familiar with uh, this song or Bonnie Bear in in any form? No and no. Um, I thought this was another perfectly B-level performance from Arthur. That's what I thought. I don't really have any thoughts. It's just a B. Cheesy is – I don't think it was necessarily cheesy, Gil – but I don't think it was um, – I just don't think it was anything particularly special either. That's exactly it. It's nothing special, which is kind of the – all my criticism of Arthur. But – But it doesn't matter I'm if trying, it's nothing special. I'm trying – I was about to say, like, I'm trying to reach for one, like, well, at least Lane had, but then Lane didn't have <laughs> – and it, I'm not going to say it because I know we have a lot of Maddie fans in this podcast, but I didn't feel like Maddie was particularly that special. Nope. Eric, you could say whatever you want about Arthur Gunn. You can't be mean about Maddie. Maddie deserved her win. Katie deserved to win. Shut up. <laughs> this is what this what the podcast has come to. Um. Anyway. It's devolving into into bitter arguments about season 16. <laughs> but like well, the fact that season 16 is themselves, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not that much to talk about. Um, oh, Catherine Turner says, Katie says, thank you. Um, yeah, Maddie and Katie final two would have been perfect. Um, who who would get your vote in that final two? I would personally probably vote for both, but I, I, I don't know. That, that would be really close. Cop out. <laughs> that would be a cop out? They were both on my draft. That season, I had both of them on my draft. I would have won either way. Anyway, let's move on to Just Sam. All right, so we move on to Just Sam, which – I don't know. Comparing Arthur Gunn, like on my ranking of the contestants on from who I would most want to win, who I would not want to win, I feel like Just Sam is kind of like middle to like upper echelon kind of, but never really like number one for me. Um, her her Disney song is A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes from Cinderella. Um, yeah, <laughs> I will say some other people pointed this out and I'm going to point it out also. It's that some of these backgrounds were super distracting during these Disney See, performances. Actually, the thing is, I liked the backgrounds, actually, because I felt like it was the closest we got to any production value of a season, with, like, actually, like, Disney animation behind some of these contestants. For me, the production just got really, like, too much. Like, I, I'm okay with a little bit, like, look, they're in their houses. There's there's not that much to do. But when I, – I feel like this came out more for Francisco's performance, who we'll talk about in a minute. But the the – just was so I'm like looking at there's like a little Disney character like walking around over there. I'm like, oh what's that Disney character gonna do? You know what you, use, you, know what you could use in more animation? I think I think I think Dylan could have used more animation. I think Johnny could have used more animation behind him. Is that a dig? Interpret that however you would like. <laughs> anyway, as for Sam's vocal itself. It was fine. I mean it was she actually, actually did vote a bit for Just Sam after this performance. I'm going to say this. I started the season really not on the Just Sam train. I thought the the overemphasis on kind of the, the drama and the emotion of it all was distracting. And I think I actually coming? pointed this out. What? Is there a butt coming? Well, <laughs> we <laughs> hold on. Well, during those shows, 
the the early shows it was just the emotion it was just it, it felt like too much it felt like i was getting in over my, um just too much and i i think i said in an earlier po podcast that i think she will benefit from the transition to the live shows when kind of it's it's that's stripped away and you're kind of just left with her really really fantastic voice and kind of stage presence and i think this is this is kind of a a, a moment of what i'm kind of mentioning where you just get the voice and I can, I'm starting to fall into, I'm starting to forget all that early season stuff and able to enjoy her for what she's given now. And I'm finding myself like pleasantly enjoying her performances. I think she's, she's not my favorite in the season, but I've, I've developed a warm spot for her, which I really didn't think I would say earlier in the season. Good. She, she's my second favorite contestant left. If not third, who's who's number one? We'll get there. <laughs> All right. Well, what what did you think of her first performance here, Eric? I thought it was nice. I mean, I wouldn't be thrilled to see her win, but I wouldn't be thrilled to see any of them win. So, um, that's too harsh. I, come on, I mean, it, it's it's not thrilled. I mean. Some of them would I could say that they deserve to win. I just wouldn't wouldn't be my thing. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna say <laughs> what? Go ahead, you first. No, you go. I'm just gonna say if if we're playing the deserves to win game, the only two people who deserve to win are Julia and Francisco. I think no one else has kind of had anywhere close to a moment either of them two had, like. Julia had New York State of Mind, and Francisco had his second performance this show. I don't think anyone else kind of had anything on that level. Like, Louis, well, I think Louis is a bit of a dead man walking. Dylan was kind of Never just middle. Never count on a white guy. Never count what? on a white guy, Adam. I'm just saying, if we're talking deserves, that's who, I, who I'm saying. We're not talking deserves. We're talking might. <laughs> well, you said before that does she deserve they to deserve, win? I think Francisco is the only one who has really made a case deserve to win. Julia deserved it too, Eric. Why do you? Why do we always find ourselves in this situation? I'm like, I won't say. For... We'll we'll get to Julia, but let's let's just get for just Sam, and we'll we'll get to. Both. All right, go on. Um, her second performance. Um, I like her first performance better than her second one this week. Um. I feel like some of the bigger notes on I Turn to You just felt like kind of like tossed off, if that makes any sense. Just like she didn't really carry them or something, whatever it was. I found the song choice just strange to begin with. I mean, I mean, look, Christina Aguilera is kind of big voice. I think Christina Aguilera is the perfect artist for Just Sam to kind of go for. No. I, I don't know why it's this song. I feel like they're better well, songs in her catalog. I don't really disagree on that. Just Sam has a very smooth, um, crisp voice, if that makes any sense. If I think you can use the right words for that. And Christina Aguilera's a very gritty voice. And no, no, it's totally not the right artist to go after for Just Sam. So is the song just a, a misfire itself? I think so, personally. But I, th I thought, I don't know. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I just didn't think it was... I'd still give it a B minus, but I didn't think it was as good as the first. I don't think anyone got anywhere close to an A for me. Maybe, maybe one, I would give one an A minus. Um, but as a whole, I mean, I feel like we've got to grade this season on a bit of a curve. But her second performance, I turn to you. It was fine. I feel like it just the song choice for me was a misfire. I think she could have gone for something better. I feel Mother's Day tributes are kind of like an awkward like song to pick like how do, you, how do you pick a dedication for like your mother like what what songs do you pick a song like they like do you pick like the songs that they were going for here were songs that like discuss mothers or kind of have the word mother in in the title like I'm how do you can get laura and elena as like my mother does that's one of the songs <laughs> yeah so here's the question it's i have pour, for Katie. On, pour on the pour on the sugar <laughs> If Katie is in the chat, I would ask what song would she have sung for this round? Like, how, n not just what song would she have sang, but how would she go about picking one? Like, where do you, wh what, what's the view you're going for? Do you pick like a song they like, a song that's kind of like 
well, in the spirit. This Kathy Turner is also in the chat. Um, Katie might, you know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, I'm ready to move on to Johnny. Are you? Well, we move on to Johnny West. So, uh, his first performance is almost there from The Princess and the Frog. I thought this was a really, I just want to say right off the bat, pretty good so uh, song choice here. I mean, for me, it wasn't terrible, but I, I already forgot it. Um, the most memorable thing for me was how cool the background animation was on this one. Hmm. I, I did find it, like I said, it, this was another case where it was cool, but a little bit distracting for me, where I'm... For me, I, 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 I appreciated the distraction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's, here's something we got to kind of talk about here a little bit. Um, do you think we're writing Johnny off a little bit? Oh, I, I think he has a very good chance of winning. Well, I would like that because he's on my draft. <laughs> but, uh, and um, I will say, so... I think I think the winner is between um, Arthur, Johnny, and Francisco. Hmm. It's one of those three. I, look, Johnny wouldn't be my number one pick to win. I think he's probably, like, number four or five. Kind of maybe I would... Him and Julia, not Julia, um, Just Sam are kind of interchangeable for me. Like I would put, I would go Julia, Francisco, Johnny, Just Sam kind of interchangeable there. Um, but I, I like the song. I like that he's, he's kind of, he is one of those contestants that I think is taking the biggest toll because of this format. I think he would have done better on the stage and kind of feeding off the energy. I, I don't know. What What do you think? Um, I don't know what I think, honestly. I, I, I'm trying to follow the rule of, you know, it's nice, it's really nice to say, don't say anything at all. So I'm, I'm just not going to talk too much. Um, all right. Because I just, Johnny, Johnny's definitely got fans. He seems like a nice person. And, and, he, has, and, he, and he definitely has some talent. He's just not my thing at all. And as a result, he's going to win. <laughs> Look, I, I there's still one more episode of the show. I mean, there's two performance left. Uh, I'm reaching here a little bit, but um, yeah. like I did with Lane Hardy. But I maybe he's got like I want one A performance from Johnny. Like I I feel like he he's one of those contestants that had there been like more episodes, I feel like he's. It's in there. Like, I've, there's an A performance in there. It just needs to be, like, dug deep, and someone needs to go in there with a hammer because it's just – we, we got to get there so quickly. And I'm like, just – you're not going to get it in time. We're not going to get the, the A performance from Johnny. And it's, it's a bummer for me because um, I, I just think we're missing out something good here. And I feel like we're it, – it, the season's just so rushed, Eric. It's just so rushed. <laughs> Yeah, it is. All right. Well, we move on to his second performance, um, Amazing Grace, although he did switch up the lyrics a bit. Um, what did you think of this one, Eric? Not my thing at all. Plain and simple. Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> the song choice wasn't my thing. The fact they changed it up wasn't my thing. And everything about it makes me think that he's gonna win. So I'm just not. I'm just. I'm just preparing myself. Emotionally. What was the problem though? Like what? What? What did he do wrong? Like what? What was wrong in the change up? Or well, I mean, nothing was wrong with it. I just don't like the song choice. I don't like when people sing things that are, that are like very churchy songs. You know, you might say that, but I think it's pretty smart move uh for oh, American I'm not saying it's not smart it's gonna if, if anything this performance is the one that's gonna give him the win but yeah it, we all it's also the same thing that's gonna make me really not happy when he does it's funny I actually watched this episode since it was Mother's Day I actually watched this episode with my mother um we watched I think we started when uh Francisco's first performance so she saw this kind of on and 
of all the contestants, she first liked Francisco, and then she said she actually liked Johnny more, and she said she really liked this performance. And I, I could see a lot of people thinking the same. I think, I think we might be writing off Johnny. I, You're I right. A, Johnny. I think he has a very good chance. I think he is top three. I don't see him. Oh, I, I think I think he's top two. It's not the winner. No, because the top two is going to be Julie and just Sam. That, that can't be. He's he's got to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, oh, you as win. Eric. <laughs> I wish. All right. Well, anyway, I thought the, the performance, look, wasn't amazing. It was a B for me, in my opinion. It wasn't the great – no one kind of really got my attention here, um, These this episode. But, I mean, it was it was serviceable. It was like, it was like going to a restaurant and getting, like, a, a fine plate, but nothing special. It was just – Fine play. You probably won't remember it tomorrow, but it was fine. Okay. Let's talk about Louis Knight. Louis Knight. All right. So for his Disney performance, he is doing Can You Feel the Love Tonight? So um, before we go live, Eric actually got my live reaction to this <laughs> Grace's <laughs> Two Girls in the Finale. <laughs> Grace, yeah, you're absolutely right. They they would find a way to bring a guy back into it if that was the case. <laughs> here, I said this to Eric before we went live, and I'm going to say it again here. In my opinion, as much as I enjoy Grace and Just Sam, I think this season is one of those. It's may the best man win, <laughs> which kind of makes me sad. I mean, we lost three girls going into this into this round. Anyway, Louis Knight doing Can You Feel the Love Tonight uh, from Lion King. This song takes me back. This was actually um, uh, at my sister's wedding. This was actually their first dance song. So I always have that memory from it. Um, I, I love the song. And I got to say, a lot of people ragged on this Louis Knight performance. I don't think it was terrible. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone on Louis because I really liked his Coldplay song. And I kind of like this. I kind of dug it. It wasn't amazing, but I I dug it. You dug it? I dug it. I, 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 that's a word. Dugged? Is it a word? I think it's a word. You dug it. <laughs> we like to make up words here in reality hour. Eric, you know this. Okay. Anyway, I thought this was not terrible, but also not worthy of winning American Idol. I'd give it like a C plus. Oh, I I think Louis Knight's a dead man walking. Honestly. I don't. You don't think he's a dead man walking? Oh, I Who think is he's a, dead dead man man walking? a dead man walking? Who is a dead man walking? Um well Julia's a dead woman walking and No, stop saying that. And and Julia's think, gonna win. And I think Dylan also is dead. So all right, I'm going to disagree with you, Eric. I think Louis Knight's a dead man walking, but I think that second person it can't be because they because remember they showed they, last few weeks they showed him delivering food to people. <laughs> Look, so here's he, he can't go away. He he can't be done. Here's what I'm going to say. The universe forbids it. <laughs> here's what I'm going to say. I think this next week we are going to get a shock boot. I think someone is going to slip through the cracks. I think we are going to get one surprise. And you know what? It's going to be Arthur. Arthur is going to go out. <laughs> oh, just... Adam, I love you and your terribly wrong predictions. <laughs> you know what? If I was right all the time, that wouldn't be fun. Like, uh, it's, it's fun to have a little bit of wildly wrong um, predictions anyway. Um, Anyway, can you feel the love tonight by Lion King? I thought it was solid. I don't get by Lion King. By by the lion. Did I say that? You said you said by the Lion King, which, which is great. Um, being of well, Elton John. That the song is not the song itself. It's the Honest Trailers version of the song. Have you seen that? I have not seen that, Eric. Go watch it. All right. Anyway, can you? Um, it's a fine performance. A lot of people are raggy on Louis Knight, kind of because all the. Can we talk about the one thing I kind of liked. 
Kui Mukuma, the second performance. All right, let's talk about a second performance. Um, it is, uh, it's it's the Carol King song. It's uh, when I call you friend, I think, or something. You got a friend. You got a friend. All right, Eric, I guess like this one. <laughs> Somehow I did. For me, this is the first time I kind of saw what my what they see in him. Too little, too late. But my favorite performance of this, uh, that he's done all season was this one. Hmm. Um, I actually gave it a B plus. That is peak Louis Knight, Eric. That is absolutely peak Louis Knight. That's the best you could possibly do. All right. Well, it, it's funny. I'm actually just starting to think, like, as obvious as it would be that someone like Francisco or Arthur is going to win this season, I feel like anyone could almost win. As as we're, even Louis Knight, who I think is a dead man walking, I could also see a a vision of him winning, which mm -hmm. isn't going to be much. I mean, this is going to be the first idol winner with no confetti. I feel like everyone like is going to get a bag like mailed to their house. <laughs> and it's going to be like a single bag of confetti. And then when they win, like one person is going to walk on and throw it over and go, yay. And that's it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Um, anyway, for this performance, I agree. I thought it was, it was good. Like, Louis Knight didn't have a stinker this episode, in my opinion. And, um, and yet I do still think he's a dead man walking, but I also can see him not going home, Eric. And that's weird. Yeah. But yeah, then again, this entire season and this entire predicament we found ourselves in and is... the entire world is weird. Um, Yeah. All right. Well, uh, who, who's up next? Julia Gargano. I'm going to be really bummed if we lose Julia. <laughs> I'll be checking the idol pad later tonight. No spoilers, please. I, I've, I'm not I've remained spoiler for you. I've remained spoiler free pretty much almost the entire season. I knew Michaela was going to go home because. Yeah. Cause I spoiled that one. Cause, cause, cause we all knew she was going home, and I just had to. Well, vent. that was obvious. I just had to vent about it with someone, so I had to tell Adam. But I gotta say, I, I tweeted this earlier, but I love song spoilers. Like I love to know what they're singing, but when you don't know it, it's it's so much better. Like it's weird. I I don't know why. I, I love the. Idol isn't kind of what it was in like when I started watching the show and kind of every little bit and of news. Was kind he of, started watching in season nine. <laughs> you know, but like every little bit of information that we got from the show was like deeply analyzed and like ripped apart. The forums were kind of alive with this stuff. One of my like strongest memories of, of this kind of thing that I'm talking about is season 13 it was Gina Irene season when was 13? Yeah. There was, I remember spending like days because there was a report that Gina Irene won the coin flip and then gave Caleb Johnson the pimp spot. Like, I remember that was like, that was a whole debate. Like, that was kind of where we were at in those days. And now it's kind of not at that level anymore. People aren't as willing to kind of, I don't know. The show's just, as as much as it pains me to say, it's, it's losing steam a little bit um, because it's just, First of all, because they're just kicking people off so willy-nilly. And the, I feel like we needed that structure of having – what set it apart from The Voice was that we had the opportunity for growth. We were we were with the contestants longer. And because we don't, I feel like it's just not as much – it doesn't it's, it's, it doesn't birth that kind of interest and that kind of like people analyzing it because people just go home. Like everyone is just – they cut home people, they send people home so much at a time that you can't get as invested as you can. But um, what were we talking about? I, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to figure out what <laughs> like, rambling on and on. <laughs> Julia Gargano. Uh, <laughs> Julia Gargano doing Beauty and the Beast. Um, yeah, but what was this? Like, look, I want Julia to move on. Like, I want Julia to win and get that, like, single fistful of confetti. Like thrown in her face, but <laughs> this was just like 
there, it was she switched it up, but weirdly, like I, they made it. She made it. This is a word I don't ever use, but I'm going to use it. Like schmaltzy, like just very. I don't make sense. Of this for me, Eric. Um, I actually liked the idea behind it, but the problem was the execution, as usual, with Julia. Um, it was hard to hear her voice in parts of it, and uh, yeah, I didn't hate it, but it wasn't good. Yeah, I was watching this episode with, like I said, my mother, and we, we there were parts where we had to up the volume because we couldn't hear her. Like the the music was kind of the mixing was a little bit off, but I I thought the the, the the arrangement was strange. I, I get that she was going for kind of a jazzy feel. But I don't get this song. Like, I don't get, like, look, it's a fine song for Beauty and the Beast. I don't think it's a good competing song. It kind of just, it's so straightforward. Like, there's kind of no magic to it, which is weird because that's kind of the thing that I have is that the Disney catalog is so broad and there's so many songs to choose from and we just kind of get the same old we, like we two of these songs were repeats like what there, there's more to do than kind of these basic kind of vanilla song choices eric mm -hmm. all right well as rough as her first performance was i actually thought her second one was better i don't think it was amazing but i thought it was better um it is um sweetest devotion by adele which is um not not i've never heard of this adele song is this a new song of hers eric it's an album track whatever it is what does that mean it was not a single so all right which is weird i like i said very like obscure song I suppose, yeah if you're gonna go for adele like first of all i think it's a good idea to go for adele because she's in the news and you might get some Get some Eric as Eric shakes his head. I just think there's better so like this was another case where I'm just thinking, where were they kind of going with these Mother's Day song choices? Like where did they what was kind of the thought process behind them picking them? Because some of these just eh, I don't know. But look, the performance itself, I'm gonna go B plus. Okay. This is this is the first. I'm gonna rate a Juliet performance above you. I gave it an A minus, actually. I thought Whoa. I thought this was this was my favorite performance of hers all season. Um For real? And, I, and I hope it's enough to put her over Louis and Dylan into the finale. I'm not sure it will be, but I hope it is. I hope so because I want her to win. Don't think. Uh, Adele wrote this song for her son, so in that way it was fitting. Oh, I get that, but it is still obscure. I feel like people don't know this song. Like, I know a lot of Adele's songs. Like I said, I've never heard of this one. I d did you know the song, Eric? Vaguely. I mean, look at the album Twenty Five, and it's a good album. But yeah. Anyway, I thought the beginning was a little bit rushed. Like it was kind of. It has a yeah, a lot of words that kind of need to be said really quickly. But I thought the, the second part was better. I thought it was stronger. And like I said, B plus for me overall. But I am really worried for her, Eric. Yeah. I'm, wor I, I'm worried for her just by actually liking a performance of her. <laughs> it's the kiss of death uh, from Reality Hour. Oh, of course it is. The second I like someone, they're gone. Katie knows that, um, sadly. Um, anyway, um, Francisco? Speaking Francisco. of like me, and hopefully at the wrong time. What was that? I... Speaking of me liking someone suddenly and hopefully hoping it doesn't end their end their chances. Look, uh, Francisco. Remember in like the Hollywood rounds, we would have cut Francisco at one point. Oh yeah, yeah. I was here. Bored. <laughs> here we are, and now he's I... now my last hope for winning. I think he's a front runner on it. Like not like front runner to win. Like I think, look, I don't want to count Arthur Gunn out, but I am going to in this scenario. I think we're looking at Arthur Gunn and Johnny in the, in the final two here. No, not Arthur, Francisco and Johnny. 
I totally just messed that up. Arthur is making the top two no matter what happens. I don't. He's so boring though. Like there's just. I hope you only won. What? What does that even say in that? Don't worry. Okay. All right. Anyway, Francisco doing your in you'll be in my heart from Tarzan. Uh, I love this song. Um, are, are you familiar with it, Eric? Of course I am. I mean, for me, this was actually this was my favorite performance of the first round, which is weird. Francisco's become my favorite now that all my actual favorites are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I agree. I actually thought this was my favorite of the um, the first round. The one problem I had is that it was so distracting, the kind of uh, production That's around him. Here's the weird thing. The weird thing is this one's split opinion because Melinda and Slezak really hated this performance for some reason. Huh. Look. All right. I think at best this I don't was know like, what they were hearing that I wasn't or what I wasn't hearing that they were. I don't know. But for me, this was like a B plus at best. But then again, it, it's it's not so much a testament to Francisco doing great as much as a testament to everyone sucking this round. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So like, it's like here. Here's what I will say. It do it's it's like in school when you take a test and you look at the grade and you got a B minus, but everyone else scored like below a fifty. It's like, huh? I do. I did great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's kind of my thoughts on this. I mean, it was fine. It was good. But, like, everyone just – it was so much better because everyone else kind of wasn't. Yeah. All right. We move on to his second performance, which is River by Leon Bridges. And look, if anything, I think this performance might have secured him a win here of the show. I think Julia had a moment with uh, New York State of Mind. I think it was last week or maybe the week before. No, it was last week. This was the other big performance for me so far of the season. Those two are kind of the ones that I am I think are the highlights. This was very, very good. It was sublime. It was sweet. It was well sang. I thought it was very, very good, Eric. All I wrote is I want him to win after this week, and I gave it like an A. So, yeah, basically. It'd be cool to see him as a winner. I think he'd um, – It would be cool. I mean, I, look, I'm going to say this. Win. I don't think anyone from this season's kind of going anywhere, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But um, maybe you could, like, launch a YouTube page. <laughs> like, He'll do better than that, but who knows. Anyway, look, that's just where we're at in the season. This is this is the, the hand we've been dealt and the people we have to talk about. So Francisco and Julia, final two for me, is kind of what I'm hoping for. I think that is the most deserving uh, end to the season, but we will never, ever get it. Correct. <laughs> we move on to our last contestant, who is also the contestant I have the least amount to say about. Um, Dylan James performed. First of all, he did a car song, which um, are, are you a fan of cars, Eric? Either the literal. Is or the everyone movie. a fan of those movies? I mean, I don't think anyone is. I think I saw I, one of them in mo- theaters. I don't remember I, which I one. Saw, I saw Cars two in the theater. I'm sorry, it, it was terrible. But actually, here's the thing: it wasn't terrible. But for Pixar, it was terrible. Hmm. Uh, but the song itself, uh, I couldn't get into it. What about you? I wrote the same thing for both of Dylan's performances, and so I'll just cover both of them now. Not my thing, and I'm pissed he made it over Michaela, but this was perfectly competent. B. Yeah. It was fine. Like that's that's the problem with this season of American Idol. Another, if we're adding to the list, it's we talked um, on Reality Hour. We covered the season of the X Factor um, Celebrity, which is the the forbidden season. <laughs> but <laughs> I gotta be honest, I remember more of those contestants for like the train wreckiness of it. Like, yeah, I, the worst thing to to say on this show for a while. Um, 
Cars two is easily worth it. Yeah, correct. <laughs> um, and correct how it played Panda. <laughs> um, what I'll say is, um, the rant I've been trying to say is like, I liked X Factor Celebrity better than the season of Idol because as bad as some of the performances on X Factor, well, most of the performances on X Factor Celebrity were, at least they were memorably bad. And <laughs> at least Megan was memorably good for me. So my feeling is it's better to have some A's and some F's than to have a whole season of B's and C's, personally. 100%. 100%. I remember more of the contestants from X because at the core of it, like what we're talking about here, what these shows are about, it's about entertainment. It's about characters. It's about arcs. It's about interesting people. A dumpster fire is more interesting than just forgettable performances across the board. Like at least look, Ideally, we'd have amazing performances like in season 11 where you're kind of able to get invested. But when it's just Bs, like that's that's like when having – When the average – when everyone's like a B or a C, I'd much rather get a couple – a lot of Ds than an A personally. I don't think we've seen like an A plus all season. I would even say maybe last season two. I'm going to challenge you on that. I think Jeremiah ha- – did like two A plus performances. The only A plus I remember is nothing compares to you by Maddie. Otherwise, yeah, that's the thing. We don't get those kind of performances anymore. And it's just such a bummer. Ugh. Anyway, um, what did what did Dylan sing for a second song? Um, what was it? It was Hang On, Hang On by Amos Lee. Um, what did you make of this one, Eric? I already said, I wrote the exact same thing for both performances. Yep, I'm going to co-sign. I, I don't have that much to say. I'm just, he's, Dylan is not my thing, and I kind of hope he goes home next round, as, as terrible as that is, because it's just, it's so vanilla. There's just nothing kind of there. Mm-hmm. Every performance of his, I feel, has been the same thing. Like, there's been no veering off. It's just kind of, it is what it is. And on that note, let's talk about the status of our draft, shall we? All right. And then I want to I wanna do some predictions, but what are we talking about the draft? I'm just going to put up these two banners I made. So I have left just Sam, Francisco, Dylan, and Louie on my team. And Adam has Arthur, Johnny, and Julia. I think this is a pretty fair, honestly. Like, I think it's a good split. I think I think you have two potential winners, and I have one potential winner. Yeah, Johnny and Julia. No. <laughs> I can dream. You can dream. Um, yeah, I think... Look, I, I I'm down one. Eric's got the four to my to my three. I think uh, I I am happy with my team. If if we're going down, I'm I'm happy to go down with this ship. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's pretty quickly talk some predictions here because we have seven contestants going into the first ever five person finale. Eric, who is not making it to the finale, and it better not be Julia. Um, I All think. Right. What, wait, better question: Who should be going home, and who will be going home? Who should be going home? Um, my personal preference is I'd send home Dylan, and I'd send home Johnny. And who will? Who will be going home? Um, Dylan and Julia. Okay, I'm gonna say who. Sh- I'll play Panda is wrong. <laughs> Who should go home? I'm going to say Dylan and Louie. Wait, you would put you would put Louie through? Like, who should? Only because I think he has less of a chance of winning it than Johnny. And, I, and I'd rather get rid of Johnny. So the chat has turned against me. I feel very betrayed. 
Um, so should go home and Dylan and Louie, who will go home. Louie and Julia. You think Dylan makes the top five? I think he does. I think he's he's so plain and inoffensive that he will get the votes. <laughs> okay. Well, so that was an episode of American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> what is what has this show become? That was officially television. Yes, it was. <laughs> That's that certainly happened. Uh, such a bummer because I I blame I blame Katy Perry. <laughs> Let's play this game, Eric. Who who do we blame for this season? And um, I I know we can blame the coronavirus, but actually we can't just blame. Alpha Panda is switching to Team Adam. Yes, we got we got one person. Well, that's fine, but I'm not gonna show that banner on the screen. That's not fair. That's um oh, absolutely fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, who who's to blame here, Eric? Um, coronavirus. All right, I have a darkest timeline to throw out to you. And this is really bad, but I'm going to throw it out there. What if the two people sent home, Julia and Just Sam? It's possible. That is the final five we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> that is what this season deserves. If that happens, Party. if that happens, <laughs> then, then the season is going to end with Ryan Seacrest announcing his retirement and Bobby Bones like popping into frame going, and I'm taking his job. That's what the season is going to be. And then here, here's here's the, the, another darkest timeline. It's that <laughs> Katy Perry announces that she's cloning herself into two other people. So now she's just going to be the entire panel. <laughs> There's going to be no Lionel Richie. <laughs> no Luke Bryan. It's just three Katy Perrys. And Bobby Bones. Okay. Um, anyone to wrap it up? I'm Adam Samuel. You can find me on Twitter at Adam Soapbox. We're on my two websites, soapbox.com, adamsoapbox.com, and adamstvblog.com. I should really change that because when we started the podcast, we were originally Adam's TV Podcast, and I had my website, uh, my website Adam's TV website. Maybe just change it to realityhour.com. That'd be nice. Uh, a job for a rainy day. But where can we find you, Eric? EricAsher.com, bit.ly slash Eric Lovitz, where there's been no activity lately because there have been no concerts lately. And then Eric and Scratch for Twitter. <laughs> All right. So uh, I guess that's going to be the episode from us. Um, hopefully you'll stick around uh, for later this week when we will be doing our um, Where They Went Wrong podcast. Other than that, it's only one more like episode of American Idol kind of talk about, which is crazy. Until next time, everybody. Peace.